Have you ever met a real Christian? In the traditional American Bible Belt, there are politicians, churchgoers, rotary clubbers, and other members of social clubs and social media. They can say they're Christians, and they popularly do say that they're Christians. But how badly might they be fooling themselves? My friend Hannah Ford, the well-known political activist, was born and raised in Alabama. She didn't have to claim to be a Christian because her life marked her as an openly honest and sincere believer in Jesus Christ. She stood out as different to those who encountered her. And this is because her faith was intelligent, real, and active. What she believed changed her life and then influenced everyone she met. I have just returned from her funeral. Hannah turned 27 just three days before she lost her life in a sudden car crash. She had been recently engaged to be married. She was driving home alone from a potential wedding venue. She died instantly. I met Hannah before she was a believer. She was 12 years old at the time. She came to faith not long after and discovered the core beliefs of biblical Christianity, which would guide and inform everything about her life. And it started with real and genuine and unashamed faith in Jesus Christ. It was these core beliefs which began changing her life and quietly affecting the lives of hundreds of others. And today we know about the development of her faith because of the transparent honesty in numerous journals that, that she left. Here's, here's a story from just one of them. When Hannah was 15, her 15-year-old cousin Abby died. And Hannah did something then, at that point, that Christians have been doing for centuries. She sat down and wrote a really clear testament of her own faith, primarily as a comfort to loved ones. And historically, this kind of testament might be read publicly at one's funeral or in the reading of a legal document like a last will and testament. And this is what the word testament means. It's a statement of faith, something that one can attest to legally and even put their name to it. And so in 15-year-old Hannah's case, why would this be a potential comfort to loved ones if Hannah was to die? And well, it's because according to biblical Christianity, it is only on the basis of an informed faith in Christ alone can any person spend eternity securely in the Savior Jesus Christ and with the Savior Jesus Christ and with Christian loved ones in heaven for eternity. And so at age 15, Hannah recorded in her journal that if she died, she would want everyone to know eight things about what she believed, what she truly believed, in her own words and of her own volition. And this is her summary right here. Number one, my home is not here on earth, but in heaven. Number two, this earth is the closest to hell I'll ever see. Number three, Christ is my all. And number four, because of his work, I will be in heaven. I am confident in Jesus. Number five, better is one day in the courts of the Lord than a thousand elsewhere. Number six, our sovereign Lord has the best plan for all of us. And I know Hannah really did believe this. Number seven, time on earth is short. Number eight, in heaven, the hard battle is at rest. And then she signed it, ever onward. And at Hannah's funeral, many affirmed that she lived like that, ever onward. And this is how I knew her. And this, this is the, the Hannah Ford that I knew. Her life as a young activist was not so much about politics as it was a fight for life, for liberty, for real justice, the standards of law. And she was really effective in this from her teen years. And then she taught others, she, including her younger siblings, what she knew about doing these really hard things. In a letter to her sister, she wrote this, This is no time for ease and comfort. It is a time to dare and to endure. What joy is there in shrinking from a most glorious struggle? We don't, we don't have to beat them, just fight them. Every man dies, but not every man really lives. And so we, standing and outnumbered, charge to the field once more 
to fight like warrior poets. And yes, freedom, truth, and the gospel always prevail. Hannah learned a lot about Christian life and culture from her Christian home, from her Christian parents. She was the eldest of eight. Her life took identity in big family projects, big family gatherings, big family friendships. And there's a wall in her kitchen just covered with photos of other families that they know and love. Perhaps 60 different families, many of them with lots of children and grandchildren. And this week I noticed on that wall a, a Christmas card photo of my family fixed into the mix. And every time I have visited their home, it had just been filled with guests and friends and allies. And it was for these friends and loved ones that Hannah was living and fighting. In her 27 short years, she achieved more than most of us will in our lifetimes. When she was 16, she wrote this to herself. Never forget that knowing the right answers and knowing the right rules will not save you. But salvation is in Jesus Christ alone, and zeal for His truth is powerful unto salvation.